This was the moment the miners and the local community learned that Crofty's fight was definitely over. The miners' leader comforted the chairman of the local council. The people that work here are like my family. Mm -hmm. And saying goodbye to them is one of the hardest things you can do, mm -hmm. right? Nobody gives you any counselling to, to cope with this, right? I talk to them. They're all my friends. We're all friends. We're a close-knit community working on the ground. We're proud to be Cornish, right? Mm -hmm. This decision now shouldn't split us, but we're all going to go our separate ways, and a lot of these people we may not ever see again. At Crofty and at the mine's mill, which is at Wheel Jane, the mine workers were given confirmation of what had been expected since last night. From first light this morning, miners turning up for work had been expecting the worst. They went underground knowing that by the time they emerged, Crofty's fate would be sealed. Some of them learned the news by telephone before they came back up. I'm not surprised, I'm disappointed. It was always going to be a, a close decision. I think that um, what we put forward to government was a workable proposition. They've decided that it is not. The last tin mine will close early next month. It has lost its fight for survival exactly six months after it started. It was back in August that the agony began. Miners turning up for work were told instead to go to a local cinema. Well, I just heard off the blokes that we got a meeting today at Upper Town at uh, Redwood Cinema. The last time we had one of these when I was with Will James, closed dead. The miners assembled at the venue in Redruth. Behind closed doors, they heard that South Crofty was closing. Thoroughly depressing day. It's not commercially viable, is it, really? I mean, it's no good clutching at straws. I'm pretty upset about it. In homes across West Cornwall, families were left facing the same question. What do we do next? You know, we have the children to think about, and if we have to go away, then so be it. But you really wouldn't want to do yeah. that? I love Cornwall. I really wouldn't want to move, but... We have to think about our future and the children's future. It was the mine workers themselves who won a stay of execution. They volunteered to take a pay cut which would allow the mine a little more thinking time. Frayed nerves were never far from the surface. Managers discovered this when they asked the miners to change their working patterns to save money. The thing they're coming up with now is a continental thing and we can't do that because our wives are out working now, right? So they're earning more money than what we are. We've sacrificed too much for 10 years now and we, we can't do it no more. I'm not, I'm not doing it anyway. I'd sooner, I'd sooner jack my job in than my Mrs. Jacker job in. And then, three weeks into the crisis, a chink of optimism opened. The company decided it could apply for a major government grant. This is still very much in the future. I'm being more optimistic perhaps than I should be, but I certainly am more optimistic than I was. A forest of paperwork must be assembled to apply for a £4 million grant, and there was no time to lose. Okay. Now, if you go in the end... Right, right. A, a few days like later, the men from the ministry came down to check out the mine's prospects. The miners themselves were well aware of the importance of the visit. Well, news travels fast here. <laughs> what is the general feeling about the grant? Well, we're all hoping that something's going to come out of it anyhow, you know, and uh, it's just... Uh, the anticipation of waiting, like, you know, it's the sooner we know now, the better, I think. But in the meantime, the axe had already fallen <laughs> on 38 miners like Malcolm Harris. They were laid off in the desperate hope of keeping the mine afloat. Going out or socialising is gone. Just forget it. Uh, the other thing the car's used for now is to take my youngest, my oldest boy to school and back. Simple as that. And, a, well, <laughs> a weekly shop. Since then, dozens of other mine workers have been told to work out their redundancy notices, although few have so far actually left. The waiting has been going on for months, if not years. Today's news is the last thing that Crofty wanted to hear. Some observers won't be surprised by the decision, but that does little to soften the blow here in Cornwall. Tin mining was the bedrock of Cornwall's economy for centuries. The county has become poorer as the mines have closed one by one. But it's now clear that within a few weeks, the county's key remaining link with its entire industrial past will be severed.